So what the heck happened to the 1998 remake of Lost in Space? Let's find out. Movies, music, and monsters. Hey guys, Dan Monroe here talking about movies, music, and monsters. You know, there's an awful lot of negative opinions and ideas about this 1998 remake of Lost in Space. And I guess if you want that kind of analysis of this film, trust me, there are plenty of places you can go on YouTube to find exactly that. But I'm going to try a different approach. I really try to go out of my way to keep things not only uplifting on this channel, but also as positive as possible. Even trying to find the good things in films or TV shows that maybe I'm not particularly thrilled about. And this movie is definitely one of those. Yes, the early CGI was extremely cartoony. The bloop or the blarp or whatever that thing was certainly bordered on ridiculous. But you know what? There were actually really a lot of good things about this film and a lot of good things that came out because of this film. Maybe not the execution of the film, but elements of the film that to this day I still think are pretty cool. So, let's all take a deep breath and talk about the good things from Lost in Space 1998. Okay, here we go. The first thing I would absolutely have to say was a positive was the cast. Well, most of them. William Hurt, Matt LeBlanc, Heather Graham, Mimi Rogers, and of course, Gary Oldman. All of these actors really outstanding at what they do, and you really can't fault them for what may or may not be interpreted as a less than stellar script. I mean, William Hurt alone is an Academy Award winning actor whose movie and stage performances include such classics as Body Heat, Kiss of the Spider Woman, The Avengers movies, and so many more we could be here all day. Yeah, he did come across really wooden in this movie, but again, could have been the script, or the director, or both. Matt LeBlanc was obviously made famous during the Friends TV show and was certainly put in, in my opinion, as eye candy for the ladies. Speaking of eye candy, you got Heather Graham, who starred in Boogie Nights, and Austin Powers, the spy who shagged me. All really good actors who were doing the best with what they were given at the time. We had a we had a, a fun fun time making this. Great bunch of actors, great great people. Yeah, good a good gang to get lost with, I must say. Well I knew that the film was going to be visually interesting, but I was just overwhelmed. I mean it's just astoundingly beautiful. I think they, they achieved a, a lovely balance in that the um, the special effects are amazing and fun and exciting, but they don't overwhelm the story. They complement the story. And when I sat down in the theater in 1998 to watch this movie unfold, I was at least at first genuinely surprised that at least the overall concept of the beginning third of the movie tried to follow the Lost in Space story to some extent. Family in space with a hotshot pilot, a saboteur, the robot goes crazy, they get lost in space, they end up on a derelict spaceship and crash on an unknown planet. And honestly, up to that point, I would say I really thought that it wasn't that bad. However, from that point on, things really got bizarre with the time bubbles and spider smith, but positive. Let's focus on the positive. It was awesome that we got to see at least some of the original Lost in Space cast in this film. I thought Mark Goddard did an outstanding job as the general, and quite frankly, I thought his character was really fun to watch. That's a positive. What I'm really excited about now is the movie that's coming out. We've got a great cast, and uh, to top it all off, I do a cameo in the movie, which is great. Well, I feel fortunate to have done a part in it, you know, and I, I did the part because it's kind of a tribute to the film and to the fans to say, yeah, you know, this is 32 years later, and uh, I'm looking forward to... Uh, to see in the movie. June Lockhart was in it briefly before she turned into a bikini babe and a gorilla. Marta Kristen and Angela Cartwright, I think, maybe had one line each. <laughs> the director did actually want Jonathan Harris to be in the film, but not as Dr. Smith. 
They wanted him to play the character that hires the new Dr. Smith to reprogram the robot and sabotage the Jupiter 2. And in typical Jonathan Harris style, he said to them, I'm sorry, dear boy, there is only one Dr. Smith, and that is me. I declined, thank you very much, but they did offer a cameo, and uh, I said thank you very much, no. And then Stephen Hopkins, who's a very nice man and the director of the film, called me from London and said, what can I do or say to convince you to be in my film? And I said, there's nothing you can do, because... I'm very proprietary about Smith. I created him. I own him. And since you've hired Gary Oldman to play him, thank you very much, and I wish you both well. Goodbye. So, he was out. Billy Moomy actually tried out to play the older Will Robinson in this film. He really wanted the part, and it would have been absolutely perfect, because Billy's age at the time would have coincided perfectly with the older Will Robinson. But the executives felt that having Billy play Will Robinson would be too much of a tie-in to the classic series. And the problem with that would have been... Jonathan and I weren't in it. New Line came to me and said, we're doing Lost in Space. And they gave me their script. And I read their script. And in the script, if you recall, there's like a 40-year-old Will Robinson. And I said, okay, I'll play Will Robinson. And their response was, oh, no, 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 no. We feel that you playing the role of Will Robinson in the movie would break the tone of the movie. Mm. We don't want you to play that role. And I said, then I don't want to be in your movie. So Billy was out. But it was at least kind of cool to see some of the old classic series actors back on the big screen. So that's positive. The robot basically had two different incarnations, the first being the extremely large blue robot that was programmed to destroy the ship, and the second being the shorter, more classic look of the rebuilt robot from the second half of the film. The robots were fine. I didn't particularly have a problem with them because I understood this is a remake. However, it was very cool that they got Dick Tufeld back to do the voice of the robot. My programming has been extensive. My memory banks contain much knowledge. Robot is online, reviewing primary directives. And I was really glad for that. Just some things you don't mess with, and the voice of the robot is certainly one of those. Positive. Filming on Lost in Space began on March 3rd, 1997 in London's Shepparton Studios. There were more than 750 individual special effects shots planned and executed not only by Jim Henson's Creature Shop, but also tons of other companies that all came together to try to get this movie done. The film cost a whopping $80 million to produce, and believe me, that was a lot of money back in 1998. The hope was, according to New Line Cinema, that this film would not only launch a multimedia franchise, but also an animated TV series and a live-action TV series. So the film finally came out and grossed $136 million worldwide. But with an $80 million budget, obviously future plans in the franchise were, shall we say, lost in space. Okay, back to the positives. Despite the fact that Gary Oldman's interpretation of Dr. Smith was obviously completely different than the classic series character, I did think he did a really fantastic job portraying his own individual interpretation of the character. If I just sit back and completely forget that I'm watching a movie called Lost in Space, it's a heck of a lot easier to accept and enjoy a lot of the story beats and characters that are portrayed in this version. I thought that Mimi Rogers did a great job playing the mother. I wasn't really a fan of the family being completely dysfunctional, but I understand it was made at the time for modern audiences. But despite that, I thought she did a great job. See how I'm trying to keep this positive? Yes, the CGI was wonky, but keep in mind, this was extremely early CGI. And I gotta give them credit for attempting to do as much as they did with the limitations of the CGI that they had back in the day. 
And they did use a lot of practical effects. The Jupiter crashing on the planet was practical and, quite frankly, looked great. I loved the look of the Jupiter 1. I'm sitting there going, that's it. They nailed it. It looks exactly like the one from the show. Then it goes up. Jupiter 2. Oh, man. Spider Smith took me way out of the film, and still does. Would have been so much cooler if that had just been a practical effect, but it is what it is. Staying positive. Probably the number one positive aspect that came out of the release of this version of Lost in Space was the fact that the classic series because of this film got a huge boost back in the public domain through brand new toys, marketing campaigns for the classic series, and even a higher demand for the classic actors for public appearances. And that alone was certainly a great thing. Basically, because of this film, we got all the really cool classic Trendmaster toys, including the giant remote control robot, the series of classic Lost in Space character dolls, the miniature Johnny Lightning toys of the Jupiter, the space pod, the chariot, and the robot. There were talking robot keychains and Christmas tree ornaments, and reissues of all the Aurora Lost in Space models by Polar Lights. Really, a lot of cool, classic Lost in Space stuff. Well, this version of Lost in Space came and went, but that certainly wasn't the end of Lost in Space, I can tell you that. In 2004, there was a pilot made for a brand new TV series simply called The Robinsons. And in 2018, Lost in Space returned as a bigger-than-life multi-season TV show on Netflix, but that, my friends, is the topic of another video. I really hope you liked that positive take on the 1998 Lost in Space film. And if you did and you like this kind of stuff, please consider subscribing. I've got a whole list of cool topics that I know you guys are just going to dig. As always, if anybody has any questions, drop them down in the comments and I will try to do my best to answer them for you. And please feel free to stop back anytime as we continue our conversation on movies, music, and monsters. Movies, music, and monsters. Danger, danger.